laboratory sessions of our socket programming in C. The session is 8.1 and today's session will be about multitasking TCP servers. Also the TCP clients as well. Um, so uh, we have to first understand what are processes. So um, the idea of uh, simultaneous multiple processes came uh, from the issue of, uh, if you remember, the echo server not being able to support multiple clients at once, but it would uh, make clients wait another client to finish. So uh, all the clients uh, will have to work back to back and wait for other clients to finish their work, uh, and they cannot be working at the same time if you don't, uh, if we don't consider uh, a method of creating uh, multi-process server and multi-process clients. So the idea of multitasking server is for making it possible for multiple clients to connect and exchange data with the same server at the same time. That gives us an idea about, for example, a chatting application that would be using just a single server and uh, transferring and receiving data simultaneously. All right, so first let's try to understand what are processes and go on into the details. So first, what are, what are processes? Process is basically a running program. If you run your program, that's called a process. So uh, each process has a memory and uh, resources allocated for it. Multiple processes can run at the same time, so that's the key idea. We want to be running uh, multiple instances of one program running at the same time so that these uh, multiple clients could uh, be handled by the TCP server. And all processes, whenever you create a process, they will have uh, their own unique ID uh, inside the operating system. And they will, for example, here, we have uh, a lot of uh, processes running and they have their own process ID on the left side, the second column. Those uh, process IDs uh, give the parent processes of these uh, commands, of these processes, uh, an ability to terminate them, an ability not to terminate them, to be more precise, an ability to uh, wait for those processes to finish, uh, which I will be explaining a little bit later. So the key idea on here is that whenever you run or create a new process, you'll be having a unique uh, process ID assigned to that process. Uh, to create a process inside your uh, program, uh, what you need to do is uh, make a function call to the fork function, and that is uh, located inside unistdh header file. And it's pretty simple. You just make a fork function call without giving any parameters, and you will be having the process ID number being returned from this function. The purpose of the fork is to create a new process, which becomes the child process of the caller uh, process. So let's call them uh, parent process. The one that was creating a new process is the parent process. And the process that has been created by this parent process is called the child process, let's say. And whenever you uh, make a function call to fork, what will be done by the operating system is uh, whatever uh, is located inside your RAM, inside your random access memory about this uh, parent process will be copied uh, inside the uh, RAM, inside your RAM, and generated a new process. So that's what will happen in your uh, computer when you make a fork function call. And then after a new child is created, both processes will execute the next instruction following the fork system call. That means, uh, let's say it's here in the parent process when we didn't have the child process on the right side, we just had the parent process. And uh, when it was run running from the first line of the main function, it was running, it was creating this variable, it was increasing, it was uh, increasing the gval parameter, the gval variable, and then when it came to this line, uh, this instruction, it created a new process. It ordered the operating system to create a sub-process, a child process, by copying the uh, this parent process, every like all data. And then both processes, both child and parent, will continue from this point. That means uh, the child process will contain, uh, will have an access to the uh, variables that were created by the parent process uh, which will be completely copied. That, that means this this LVAL and uh, this GVAL is not the same as uh, the, I mean like, the, this LVAL and GVAL which is located inside child process is not exactly the same as here, but it will be containing the same values like 10 and 20. And then it will continue from exe continue executing from this line of code mm -hmm. after fork. And uh, on the parent process, uh, the resulting uh, value that comes out from the fork function call is the value which is not equal to zero that will be given back to this PID variable and if you check with the if 
um, condition, then uh, that means if PID is equal to zero, that means uh, this process is actually not the parent process, which will not be the case on the left side. Uh, because the value that is being returned from the fork is not equal to zero in the parent process case, but it will be equal to zero in the child process case. That's how you will be able to differentiate the parent process from child process. So basically in here, in the uh, if condition, we are checking if we're running uh, this instruction under the child process or the parent process. So here the if will not be entered and then we will jump up to the else. So what will be uh, what the computer you, what your PC is going to be running after this for function call is basically LVL++ on the parent process and the child process will be entering this if statement and running GVL++. So that's basically how you can differentiate uh, parent and child processes after you make a for function call. And uh, uh, so such a thing comes up uh, that's called uh, zombie processes when you try to create uh, child processes. Because like I told you, uh, the processes that have a parent process will have their own uh, process ID mapped inside the operating system. And uh, the job of the parent process is to keep track of its child processes and wait for the children's termination and get their, uh, uh, get their status of execution. That means uh, if the child process terminates correctly, then we have to know that, uh, then the parent process have to, has to know how the child process terminated. And if the parent does not do that, here we have uh, zombie processes will come up. Those children that, that, uh, that completed its job, those child, child processes that, complete, uh, that has completed its job, but not yet cleaned up, are called zombie processes. So if, not, if it's not cleaned up, what's going to happen? If it's not cleaned up, uh, it consumes some amount of space in memory. Uh, it's neglectable, but still, uh, alongside a process ID number it occupies. It's actually pretty important because the uh, process ID number is limited in computers. That's why occupying a process ID number is not a good idea. So that means children, child processes have to be actually cleaned up. It's the responsibility of the parent process to clean up its zombie children. By clean up, we don't mean we have to set the memory uh, to zero and stuff. You don't have to go deep uh, into those parts. The operating system will automatically do that part. But what you have to do inside the parent process is get the result that's coming out from the child process. So that's basically called cleaning uh, the zombie process. Once the child process exits, it passes a return status code. Consecutively, if the parent process doesn't destroy it, it will turn into a zombie process. So the parent process uh, will destroy the child process simply by uh, reading the status code that has been published by the child process. So let's mm, go ahead and take a look at the code and understand what's going on. For example, mm, here what we're doing is we're creating a child process and then uh, uh, we are entering the child processes area and printing out hi I am a child process from that child uh, processes instruction set and then what this uh, what we can follow is that child process will not be going to the next else statement because it's already inside if right so it will be just skipping this point and then uh, entering to the next if which is which will be still valid because the process ID will be zero inside the child process, and here we are printing out the child that child process has ended, and then we are returning a value. That means this zero will be returned by both uh, a parent process and a child process as well. And uh, how we are going to be differentiating a child process from a parent process is that they will be entering different conditions. And so if PID is equal to zero, that means it's a child, and if it's not, it's a parent process. So on the child process, we're printing out, hi, I am a child process, and on the parent process, we're printing out, uh, the child process of this process is has this kind of ID, and the parent process will be sleeping without noticing that the child process has already uh, terminated. Because the child process has not entered this else case, it will not be sleeping. The child process will terminate automatically. And um, what I want to show here is when we compile and run it, what we will be seeing is that uh, the child process is printing out hi I am child process and it's terminating its uh, process. That means the child process has actually finished its uh, process and it's waiting for the parent process to clean it up. 
and the parent process is still going to be executing because it's in it's sleeping and it's not terminated the parent process has not terminated and here you can see that uh, your zombie process can be uh, just printed out in the Linux environment by PSAU and then here you can see if it's uh, defunct that means it has terminated but the result hasn't been taken by the parent process um, so let's go ahead and uh, run this example and see it ourselves. So that example is the fork.c file. Let's copy it inside our directory and run it. And before that, let's open up and make sure that it's the same code. And here, as, as I was saying, uh, it's not actually the same, but it is... Um, Okay, let me, let, me, let me try to find exactly the same matching source code. Even if it's not, it's okay. Oh, it is not. All right, it's good to go, it's good to go. So, um, here, uh, what we are trying to do is actually, we are creating two variables, and then um, just let's just comment about this uh, point. And then what we're doing is uh, we are creating a child process. And then what we're doing is we're increasing uh, the value if it's the child process. Otherwise, if it's the parent process, we are decreasing by one. And then the gvel, vgvel, which is a global variable, and pvel, which is a uh, sorry, lvel, which is a local variable, have different values, which are 10 and 20. And in case of a child process, we are adding two. And in case of a uh, parent process we are decreasing by two and we are printing out those values inside uh, this if and if and else conditions where if PID is equal to zero means it's a child process data and otherwise it's the parent process data so what, we're, what we'll be expecting is uh, the values must be completely different because the starting point is 10 and 20 and we're adding two inside the child processes uh, area and we're uh, decreasing by two in the parent process so what we want to see is uh, basically 12 and 22 and then 8 and uh, 18 so that's what we want to see let's now compile and see it ourselves gcc dash o fork fork dot c and then once we run it then what we'll be seeing is basically 8 18 12 22 and that happened like i told before because the child process is increasing the values by two and then the parent process are decreasing those values by two and they are because they are separate two separate processes they will not be interfering with each other uh, that means it's not like if the child process is increasing and the parent process is decreasing the gval will not be containing 10 again like just like saying plus two minus two no it's not the same why because two pl uh, plus two will be executed in a separate process and minus two will be executed in a separate process and these prints will be executed in separate processes. That's why the values are uh, different. It's not just 10 and 20. So if that gave you an idea about uh, how fork works, then uh, what we can do is we can try to copy this uh, source file and then try to uh, print the same way. And for that, uh, let me copy this again. Oh, let me copy this fork again. And try to write the same. Oops. Try to write the same code right here. So what we're trying to do here is, oops. What we're trying to do is actually creating the uh, process first of all, PADTs. Though, so that one is the first instruction that we are creating. The first instruction that we're calling. And then uh, we are checking if it's equal to zero and printing out, hi, I'm a child process. Otherwise, uh, printing out the process ID and sleeping. Here we are printing out, uh, uh, hi, I, child process. And here let's print out, uh, printer. Uh, instead of printf, let's first give a scope child process ID will be equal to this number which is PID and then we're going to be sleeping for 
30 seconds. 30 seconds will be too much. Let's just wait for 10 seconds. And then uh, once the child process terminates, let's print out that child process has terminated instead of giving those values. Just terminated. And then say otherwise if it's the parent process, let's say parent process has terminated. So basically that's what we wanted to do. Let's try to compile it and run it. Oops. Once we run it, that we will see that the uh, child process has printed I am a child process and then it has terminated. That means the child process has already finished, but the parent process is still running. So that's why we have the uh, zombie process case here. If we make just one uh, new line here, sorry that I forgot it, it will be good to go. Now it will be more clear to understand. So here, the child process has printed out and then it has terminated while the parent process is still running. That means we have a case of zombie process. I believe that's the uh, zombie.c file that we have just written. I think we I just gave the I just wrote the code of the zombie.c file. Oh yes, this is the code that I wanted to show. Anyway, so now we know how the fork function call works and how zombies are created. And now our uh, next task is to handle those uh, processes, how to clean them. Basically cleaning means waiting for the child process to terminate and that is uh, done by the wait function call like uh, right here, wait function call, where you will be providing an address of a variable where the result of the child process will be stored to. Here let's say in the beginning we're creating a child process and checking uh, if it's equal to zero. If it's equal to zero that means it's the child. Uh, process. Then what we're doing is we're finishing that child process. So here the child one will terminate. And then otherwise if it's the parent process we are creating another child. That means it's the second child. And then the uh, second child is also terminating uh, but with a different exit code which is seven. And here it's exit and return three. It's exactly doing the same thing but giving different uh, result values. It's the same thing. And we are uh, gi giving two different values uh, to two different child children's uh, terminations. And then otherwise, if it's the uh, parent process, then what we're doing is we're printing out the children's uh, process IDs, the two children's process IDs right here and then right here. And then we are waiting for those child processes to terminate on these two lines uh, by making a wait function call. And then once we do make a wait, uh, wait function call, we are checking if uh, the status is valid, that means it has terminated, and then we are checking if the child process has really terminated, then we are printing out uh, the child sent one, the, the, the child one has sent this exit status. And when you cover with uh, the status uh, variable with w exit status, what you will be getting is the number that has that a child process has uh, returned. So here, whatever whichever child terminates first, which I think will be the child one, is going to be printed out and then uh, we're waiting for the second child to terminate and then printing out the second ch child's uh, return value and then the parent will what the parent will be doing is it's going to be sleeping for 30 more seconds it's not necessary but still um, okay so the uh, w if exit micro returns the non-zero value if the child process has terminated normally uh, with exit or exit or return uh, the wait function call suspends the instruction execution until a child terminates. And here, uh, once we compile and uh, run it, what we'll be seeing is the uh, process IDs of those uh, child processes printed out by this line of code and this line of code. And then uh, we are you know, ret retrieving the exit status codes of those children after which the zombie processes are uh, cleaned up. So we're not specifying that we want to clean the uh, child process. We're just saying, if the child process terminates, I want to read its exit status. So that's basically it, the, what the parent process has to do. It has to read the exit status, after which the operating system will clear out the uh, ter uh, zombie process automatically. Uh, so now let's go ahead and compile this file and see the output as well, which will be the wait.c file. If we compile, oops, 
if we compile this code, which is the exact same matching code as in the slides, then the output will be gcc c file. Output will be the uh, process IDs of those two children, which are 1620 and uh, 1612 and 1613, and then uh, after the children terminate, the parent will be printing out the uh, exit statuses of those children, uh, which were returning three and seven consecutively. Uh, the first child was returning three, and then the second child was returning seven. Instead of this, you can provide any value you want. Uh, if you want to play with it, for example, 123 and 157, you can just modify it and play it yourself. So the 30 seconds has passed and it's automatically uh, terminated, and then I just clicked Control c that's why we're seeing this uh, little sign. All right, uh, so now we can see that the return values of the children have changed according to our uh, modifications right here. So basically what the parent is doing is clean, it's cleaning up uh, the ch child zombie processes. All right, so this is one of the, way, uh, one of the two ways that you can clean out uh, the child process. The next way is the wait PID function call. Uh, where you have to provide, uh, where you can uh, provide the process ID and then some options. Mm, for example, the wait, uh, what is the difference? Let's try to understand what is the difference between wait function call and wait PID function call. The wait system call, the function call, suspends the executions of the uh, execution of the instructions inside the parent process until its children terminates, like it means any of its children. Uh, until one of its children terminates, and then, then uh, if the if one of the child child processes terminate, then the it will release that uh, suspension of the execution process, uh, and then the wait PID uh, system call suspends the execution of the parent process until the uh, the specific child process that we are we will be providing uh, by by this arg parameter will terminate. That means it will be waiting for a specific process ID. By default, the wait PID waits only for the terminated children, but its behavior is modifiable uh, with the option argument as they described, uh, not below, above. All right, let's take a look at the wait PID's uh, implementation, uh, which is right here. And here, uh, what this code is doing is also creating a child process with a fork function call and then it is sleeping for uh, the child process is sleeping for 15 seconds and returning a value of 24 and then um, the parent process what it's doing is it's waiting for a uh, any uh, child so if you provide minus one I, I forgot to mention this one here uh, the wait status function call is uh, exactly equivalent to wait PID by providing minus one as an argument. That means any child, uh, to, we're waiting for any child to uh, terminate. So we're just making it equivalent to uh, just wait function call. So we are uh, waiting for any uh, child to terminate and then waiting for three seconds. And w no hang, uh, what this flag means is that it will not be suspending the execution but instead it will be keeping the, the server will uh, the parent process will be keeping running this while loop each three seconds by sleeping and then just rerunning this function call and then the wait PID will not be hanging the uh, execution point so it will return immediately if no child has terminated and then the result will be given here in the status if uh, the child process really exits here and then once, once uh, a child process terminates, this while loop will break and then we, what we'll be seeing is if the child has exited, we are getting the status and printing out the stat exit status code uh, with by providing a macro, the value to a macro of a w exit status. Let's go ahead and compile this file and see. Uh, that file is the wait PID, sorry, .c file. Let's try to compile this file and see, uh, so we can see that it's matching as well. So we'll have to be waiting for 15 seconds, but I don't want to wait for 15 seconds, but instead let's wait for 5 seconds. And however long the child wants, okay, let's ma not make it 5, but let's make it a uh, multiple of 3, so that uh, we would know that the parent will be uh, catching it on the right time. So let's compile this wait PID. and run it. 
So now here what we'll be seeing is that uh, the parent will be sleeping for three seconds and then at the second uh, time of three seconds uh, sleep period is over, the child terminates and then the parent process uh, immediately notices it uh, right here, immediately notices it right here and then it exits um, at this point. Um, so basically you can just remove the sleep uh, dot three, uh, sleep for three seconds and what you'll be seeing is just continuous uh, running of the parent process until the child process terminates like it's printing out infinitely many times until the child process terminates and here both of the processes have terminated here what I tried to prove here, right here is that this weight PID was not uh, locking the um, was not suspending the execution that's what I wanted to show but instead of this if you provide just weight uh, PID and provide this you will not have an op and then uh, an opportunity to uh, run of this of these lines of code again and again and again and again. But instead, what you'll be seeing is just simply uh, this code hanging around, like this line of instruction hanging the uh, execution of the, uh, your program. It will be just hanging here. So that's basically what I wanted to show about the difference between weight and weight PID. And moving on to the next step, which is signals. So again, like before going uh, into more details about signals and processes, I want to tell you one more time why we are learning processes. So the, uh, the reason was uh, when you try to create uh, the TCP or UDP servers and clients, there will be a little problem if you do it without processes. The problem is that multiple clients will not be able to access the server at the same time because the server is not running multiple processes that can support multiple clients at the same time. Because uh, what the server has to do is it has to create multiple processes so that they will be uh, talking to each uh, client um, separately from each other, independently from each other. Otherwise, uh, one process will have to be working with only one single client and then uh, if we don't create multiple uh, processes then the parent process will force the clients to wait uh, other clients and only uh, provide a service to just one client at a time so that's why we are trying to learn about processes and now the next step is uh, signals signals mm, is basically an op uh, a software generated interrupt uh, that is used by operating system to inform another process about a specific event for example it can be interruption of the process where uh, uh, the user the person uh, by the keyboard enters uh, control.c that means I want to stop this uh, stop this uh, lines of execution for example if you do ping uh, 127001 your program will be running 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 and you can just click control.c right so that is also a, an, a signal uh, to which your uh, program will be listening to. So those kinds of uh, signals will be provided by an operating system when some kind of event occurs and there are a lot of signals and you can just go ahead and Google uh, signals in C and you will be able to s just take a look at all uh, possible ways and the most important ones that we'll be covering for today are SIG alarm which is uh, called uh, when you try to wake up a process that, ha that has been put inside a sleep state when you call a sleep function call and then uh, sig int is when a uh, user clicks control.c just like I did inside ping uh, process while running ping process and then sig uh, it's actually child sig chld uh, is an event is a signal when uh, the operating system uh, informs a parent process that its, ch its child has terminated so we're going to be utilizing this sig child signal to uh, get to know when the parent process children has terminated and just clean them up. So that basically that's what we will be doing. So signal. Uh, so what we need to do is uh, inside our parent process we have to register that signal to an operating system. We have to say to operating system, okay, operating system, inform me when my child uh, dies. And I'm not, it's a bad choice of word. I apologize for it. So okay, operating system, inform me uh, when my child process terminates. Uh, or okay okay operating system inform me when a uh, user tries to uh, click control.c and terminate my program or okay operating system inform me when my uh, process is interrupted from my sleep state 
So basically that's how it works, these signals. There are a lot of different other uh, signals as well. In order to receive signals from other processes, a process must register to the signal code. The signal code is uh, these ones, which can be different, uh, which, which there are a lot of them. Okay, so how you can signal, how, how you can register to a signal by just making a simple function call to a signal function and providing the signal uh, function code, uh, the, the signal code, and then the ha uh, handler function, which is a function pointer, void pointer. It's just, it's, don't be scared of this parameter, it's just a void pointer to a function. Um, a signal is a software generated interrupt that is used by an operating system to inform another process about a specific event. So uh, basically these two are just uh, just to give you uh, uh, an example of how to register to signals. You'll be just providing uh, these parameters to your um, this uh, function call of signal. You'll be providing the signal code, which is sick child when my child process terminates. Call this function. My child is a function that we want operating system to call when uh, the child process terminates. And then for example, sig int will be handled by key control function. When the process terminates, call my child function. If user press control C, call, call key control function. So here is an example of how to handle, uh, how to register to signals and handle them. For example, uh, inside main function, what we're doing, so before the main function, we're creating two different uh, functions. So let's not uh, <coughs> dig deep into these uh, functions, but start from the main function. What we're doing here is we're registering two signal uh, handlers uh, to these, these signal codes, which are SIG alarm and SIG int. SIG alarm is just uh, when uh, there is a timeout, uh, when your sleep uh, exits. Like, for example, you can register an uh, alarm to an operating system to say that, operating system, please uh, wake me, wake this process up if I'm in the sleep mode after two seconds. So after two seconds what operating system will do, it will send a signal which is sig alarm signal to this process and if it's uh, if it has registered a, a uh, signal handler, uh, which in this case we have it, the timeout function, the operating system will just call that function and then our uh, process's execution point will jump up to that function and here after this alarm, after registering an alarm after two seconds, we are just putting our application inside uh, the sleep uh, state. So we are just saying, I'm going to be waiting for 100 seconds. That means the process will be just dead sleeping. It will not be dead, it will be sleeping, like completely sleeping for 100 seconds. But what the operating system will do, it, it will, after two seconds, it will just wake up. It will remove that uh, sleep uh, state. And then um, the timeout function call will be called and then inside the timeout function call uh, what we're saying is uh, if the signal code is sig alarm just print out timeout and then put a register another alarm after two seconds that means it, no matter uh, if the parent process is sleeping for 100 seconds or 100 years it will be woken up after two seconds it doesn't matter so the operating system will be waking up this process after two seconds and then uh, when the uh, client Oh, not, not the client. When the user, when the person tries to click control.c, this, uh, because we registered uh, this uh, signal handler right here, uh, the function will be turned to this point and then this key control uh, function will be called and the process will terminate. So let's go ahead and compile this file and see uh, it in real life how, how it goes. Oh, but before that, let's go ahead and just read this one as well. Sig alarm. After a specified time interval, by sleep, finish. Operating system uh, will sense a sig alarm to wake it up. Also, when the sleep finishes, also when we register an alarm to an operating system. So let's go ahead and compile this signal.c file and see it ourselves. The signal.c file looks uh, very simple, like I just showed inside the slides. We are creating two different functions, which are timeout and key control, and we are registering two different uh, signal handlers to uh, attaching them to these functions to the functions that we have created above and we are making the parent process to sleep for 100 seconds it can be if you want just you can make one thousand it doesn't matter and let's try to compile the signal.c file and run it gcc-o signal signal.c file if we run it oops, if we run it the process will be sleeping and then the operating system wakes it up after two seconds, again it will wake up after two seconds, and then it will terminate. It is terminating after three times because the for loop is being run. 
just three times. So basically that is it. It's not that difficult as you can see the signals, the processes, the forks, they're not very difficult. Uh, but the task is you have to understand how they work so that you can utilize them inside your networking programs, inside your TCP multi-process uh, multi uh, code, inside your multi-process server. So uh, if you want to understand in, in a picture in, as a meme how uh, the zombie process are created, just, you can just see, for example, here, uh, the, these penguins are, these little penguins are the processes which have numbers. These normal processes are saying, what's going on with these zombies? And the children are just have terminated, but the, their parent is too busy with other stuff without uh, paying attention to its children. And here we can see it's a beautiful meme link to say, to clean up a zombie process, you should simply read the result status code from the child process within the parent process. So this penguin, this little penguin parent pe penguin has to just take a look at this at its child process that's all that's that's all it needs to do and then these will disappear and everything will be good we'll be living happy lives all right um, to clean up a zombie process you should simply wait and get the result code of the child process for that what we could do is we could register to the sig child event the sig child event by an operating system if we say to an operating system please uh, just inform me when uh, any of my child, any of my children exits, just by saying like I want to, I want to know when my child exits by just providing these properties. These properties are just simply the uh, come coming from the structure of sig action. You just have to create that uh, sig action variable and then uh, provide your handler function, uh, which in this case is read child proc function it's just the name of the void function that you create it's like a handler that will be uh, called by an operating system when your child process terminates so just give the name of that process and then uh, just empty set the uh, mask of this uh, the ACT variable which is coming from the SIG action structure and then set the flex to zero and then just register using that uh, act uh, structure you just have to pr provide the address to that structure which contains a reference to your uh, handler function to that um, uh, of that uh, child process uh, result reading function, and just provide them into the sig action function call, and that is basically it. So just here, and then uh, the child process, what it will be doing is uh, like I showed inside the penguin penguin case, penguin case. It will just take the the, the uh, read child proc function will just make the parent process take a look at its children and read its values once they're uh, finished their once they finish their termination uh, their execution. Uh, what it's doing is it's waiting uh, for process for any child to finish. It doesn't have to finish actually, but what you have to do is actually you have to uh, read back the process ID, and then you have to uh, check if that. Uh, process has terminated successfully and then printing out that uh, child <coughs> processes exit status right here so it's basically doing the same thing as I had done inside the signal case uh, uh, inside the fork case when I was printing out the child process ID and then when I was doing wait pid um, it's like the same way but it, it's being just triggered by an operating system using signals and it's more elegant way of uh, waiting for ch children's termination so basically what you have to do whenever you create multi-process uh, TCP servers, you have to be uh, handling your uh, processes, to your child processes with signals. That's the most elegant, the most beautiful way of handling. Okay, let's take a look at uh, how this works. Uh, I believe it is inside the SIG action. All right, it is not because we have just run it. Or was it here? Oops, it is the next code. So let's just for a while, let's just skip this one. Uh, we will not be actually skipping and I will, I will be still explaining inside the code as well and running it um, like as a dot C the, the, the running and compiling and running that dot C file but a little bit later because we have to understand how it looks like uh, from a big picture uh, from a bird's view so basically multi-process so now what we're doing is we're trying to connect the dots about the signals about the process forking and wait bits here we're trying to connect them all and how we and I want to show you how it looks like 
um, from a design perspective. So basically, a multi-process TCP server creates separate processes for each client, after which the clients will communicate with the process one to one. Uh, one client to one server process. So, so here, the uh, echo server, uh, which is running here, the parent process of the echo server is creating multiple uh, child processes whenever a client, echo client, tries to connect to that uh, server. So when it tries to connect, one uh, child process will be created inside this uh, this server, TCP server, echo, echo server. And then whenever a second client tries to connect it, a second process will be uh, generated. Oh, I just confused it. When this one, um, when this echo client will uh, make a connection request, uh, the parent process will a uh, parent process will generate this process, this child process, and when then the second echo client uh, makes a request, this uh, little second child process will be created, and those uh, child process will handle the communication between the server and the client. So basically this client will not know if it's working with a TCP, multi-process TCP server or just single process TCP server. It will just be working as a done like just one by one to one. But the TCP server will be very elegant about it because it's creating uh, multiple processes and working with multiple uh, clients at, at simultaneously. And then because it will uh, handle those processes once those clients terminate the connection, that means this process has finished its execution so it has to be cleaned up you know, so that it wouldn't become a zombie process. It will read the um, status, exit status code of this process and this process will be cleaned up. That way we will, be, we will have successfully created TCP multi-process server. And here is the code, uh, the source code that is for multi-processing TCP server, echo mpserver.c file. Here what we're doing is we are accepting a client, like here after accept, what we'll have is just simply a, a new client socket created. And then uh, when the client socket is valid, we are printing out a new client has connected. And then for that client, we're uh, creating a new process. That means the parent will not be hanging after this, like it will not have to uh, wait for a message to come and then send a message so that the message will be completely transferred stuff like the parent will not be hanging instead it will just come back again to accept a new client another client so that's the beauty about this code because it doesn't have to wait for uh, it doesn't force clients to wait for another another client to complete its uh, read and write function calls so after this fork function we are checking if the process number is oh, my, minus one that that's the error case that's the exception case. And then if the PID is equal to zero, this will be the child case. And otherwise, this will be the parent's case. So when the parent accepts a client socket, it doesn't actually have to uh, keep that uh, client socket open inside the parent process. It can just, uh, just close that uh, socket's duplicate because it's not necessary here. Like, uh, it's not necessary on the parent process because the message will be exchanged inside here and it will generate a duplicate if you don't close it. So you just have to make sure that it's closed and inside the child process that will be only working with that child, uh, the client, one, one client that will be serving one client's uh, read and write function calls, uh, you have to close the server socket right here. Uh, that means we don't have to handle the service operations inside the uh, child process. Yeah. The, the, the main goal of the parent process is to work with the TCP server socket and the goal of the uh, child process is to work with um, client socket. So the, what the child process is doing is while the client is sending us data, keep reading it and then writing back that message, whatever the client has sent us. This basically means an echo server but it's the multi-process uh, <coughs> multi TCP server case. And then, uh, once it's done, it's closing that client socket and saying that cl client has disconnected. So that's basically it. So now we can just compile and see how it works, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. Let me check it one more time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right. So, yeah, that, that's basically it. Let's first uh, try to understand this one as well and then just go ahead and see the source code. Multiprocessing server example, echo multiple uh, multiprocess server. Here, uh, the parent process is uh, creating a child process when the client when the uh, socket 
uh, when the client tries to connect to it, the Echo client tries to connect to it, and the parent process uh, will keep that uh, in the, the the first in the first case we will have both client and uh, server socket uh, descriptors uh, available in both ch child and parent processes, and that has to be terminated. Like the, this link, uh, the parent process will should not have, be having. Uh, a connection to both server socket and client socket that has to be terminated right here. So that's why we were making this uh, closed server socket function call and closed client socket function call inside parent process. So here's we, we what we're doing is we're making sure those um, unnecessary file descriptors are closed. When fork uh, function is called, system call is called, the whole memory is duplicated, meaning also the server and client socket descriptors are duplicated. Uh, we need to remove close those unnecessary socket descriptors from the processes as follows. The server socket uh, has the simple goal. Goal is to only accept connections, which is just simply accepting and creating cl uh, client sockets. And remove client socket descriptor. And then the client socket's goal is to only exchange data with the client. So remove the socket, uh, the server socket descriptor. So that's basically it. Let's go ahead and compile this uh, echo client and echo mp uh, server source files echo client and echo mp server <clears throat> so for this one what we'll be doing is we'll be uh, opening up three uh, terminals so that we'll be running two clients at once and then one server at a time like simultaneously let's compile those uh, echo client and echo mp server files first echo o, uh, gcc o server echo mp server.c file. And let's go ahead and compile this client as well. <clears throat> echo client.c file. Oh, first let's open up the mp server and just take a look at the code as well one more time. Um, here what we're doing is we're just simply following the uh, codes that we've been doing, that we've been writing before to create a TCP server, just like providing the addresses, creating buffers, and uh, specifying the address, so on and so forth, binding, uh, listening, which are right here. The, the main code is right here inside the while loop. Uh, we are uh, accepting a client socket and then creating a uh, another sub uh, child process right here and then running the child process code right here and then the closing the client socket uh, file descriptor on the parent process right here and then keeping on running this while loop again infinitely. So it's pretty simple, the echo and server are also pretty simple, and echo client is basically exactly the same thing as in the previous ones. It has no change. It's just creating a socket and just connecting to the server right here, and then doing this right, uh, getting the message from the uh, keyboard, and then checking if it's equal to Q. That means if the child, uh, if the user, if the person wants to terminate the client uh, process, and then it's just writing that message and reading it back and printing out that one. Just it's echo client source file. So it's basically very simple. Let's run the server uh, on this terminal. Oh, uh, just by providing the port number. And let's run the client on these two, uh, this uh, terminal and this terminal, <coughs> by providing the address of the server, which is so one client has connected right <clears throat> and at the same time what we want to do is we want to connect a second client as well because uh, guess what we have a multi-process TCP server that's why okay so let's run our TCP client echo client so now the server is saying it's ready to accept like it's it's even ready to accept more clients like let's first check if they're working both at the same time yes the first one is working as we expected it's sending this message and receiving it back from the server that means the server is handling uh, this clients uh, input and output uh, requests and here it's the same thing it's working at the same time you can do it at the same time it doesn't matter it will be handling it and even if you try to connect a new client right here, it will be still working fine. So that was the uh, basic idea uh, about how to create a um, multi-process TCP server. 
and also how to handle the zombie processes uh, oh yeah one thing that I just forgot to mention here we are utilizing these signals to detect if uh, <clears throat> a, any child process terminates that means if a client uh, closes that their process that child process that was serving uh, the specific client has to be also terminated has to be also cleaned up and that we are doing with a signal function call which is we are which is uh, we are specifying right here uh, we are providing this read child proc function which we have defined right here and implemented right here we are specifying that uh, signal to an operating system by saying I want to register to a sig child event with this handler so basically after this whenever a child process terminates that means whenever a client disconnects that child process which we created right here uh, which we created right here and which we were running right here will terminate by giving a result return code the operating system will uh, force the parent to run this inst these instructions and the parent process is going to be reading back that uh, process's status code that means the child process will be removed and that was basically it about uh, removing uh, zombie processes and um, multi-process TCP servers. The next thing, the last thing, is multi-processing client. So the thing is, uh, the input and output operations inside clients uh, can be separated because it's actually two streams, right? Uh, because when you try to write it, you're actually writing uh, to, an, to an output stream, and when you're trying to read, you're reading from an input stream. So that can be also uh, divided inside the client side, inside the echo client side, into two processes so that the writing operations, for example, will not have to wait for read process to finish. That means if you're accepting a big one gig file, you can still keep sending a message to the server. For that, what you have to do is you have to create separate process inside the echo client uh, part. Uh, even if you're receiving like one, two, three gigabytes of file from the server, you can still send a message to the server using the same uh, socket, but writing with a different uh, stream because it's an output stream and this is an input stream. So that is also uh, done by uh, uh, a fork function call inside the echo client. Uh, and here you will, you can just okay. Let me let me read this uh, boring uh, definition first and then jump up to this explanation. Sockets can communicate in both directions, thus the process for input and output can be created separately, as shown in the figure on the left. And splitting the input-output routine, not the structure of the sending and receiving, allows these to proceed simultaneously, as shown in the figure on the left. So here we can see that in, in the case of a single process echo client, the client will be sending a data and receiving data back-to-back, uh, -back, one after another. Uh, and then it has to, the sending operation will have to wait for the receiving operations and receiving operation will have to wait for a send operations, which is write and read function calls. But if you separate them, separate them uh, to uh, two different processes inside the echo client, one of them which will be writing and second of them which will be reading, uh, you can just make them uh, parallel, run in parallel, writing and reading. You will be at the same time sending the data and you will be at the same time receiving the data. So no problem at all. And the code, uh, and the code looks very simple. The implementation is absolutely okay. Um, so after connecting, you can just create a uh, you just create a new child process inside the client, and then if it's uh, equals to zero, then you can just call write routine. That's uh, write routine is on the right side. Otherwise, just call read routine. So we are dividing the uh, execution of output and input streams into two functions, just simply, and running them from two different. Uh, Two different process sub uh, child and parent processes and here write routine is being called from the child process and write routine oh, let, let me start from the read routine because it's the it's it's written above so the read routine is working with the read function call it's handling all the incoming messages and printing out to the console and uh, it's just like it's in, it's an infinite while loop it's keeping reading a message and then uh, Whenever the string length is equal to zero, it will terminate this read routine. That means that child process will terminate at this point. 
Otherwise, it will keep on printing out those messages that are coming from the server. And then the write routine, which is running on the uh, child process, is going to be also working infinitely until the uh, client, until the per the person that is controlling the machine uh, decides to enter the queue character. If it if uh, it if it just clicks the queue, then what we'll be doing is just for shutting down. Just do just TCP half close. And um, because we we can be still accepting like receiving one gig of file, right? And so we just we're just closing an outgoing uh, stream because the write routine only this write routine has to terminate. So we're doing shutdown, uh, which is very important to understand why we're doing shutdown. That's why I explained you. After making a shutdown, we're returning. That means the uh, child process will terminate. And then uh, otherwise, if it's not equal to Q we are writing the uh, message that we just received from the person uh, by keyboard and then sending it to the server. So we just separated it out like here. Okay, so this was actually the last one. Let's compile this source file as well and see it in practice. Uh, that example is the uh, echo mp client one. Let's copy that uh, inside or, okay, let me copy this inside this C drive cyg win folder and before running let me open the mp server is the same thing that i've just explained like 10 minutes ago uh, let me open the mp client one and just show you that it's matching with the slides that i've just shown you uh, we have the two functions definitions right here which is read routine and uh, write routine and uh also here i think we're not doing the zombie uh, zombie child uh, handling you you'll be better if you do it like just do the zombie function handling like uh, zombie process handling just just do a like a six sig action just register to that signal uh, here we just skipped it uh, so the uh, echo mp client one when we enter to the main function what we're doing is we're just creating a just simple socket and trying to connect to uh, the server using the address that were that was provided by an argument as an argument and then after connection is established what we're doing is we're creating another process ID uh, another child process and then uh, making the function calls to the write routine and read routine separately on two separate processes which right here is the child process and here is the parent process um, and the content is exactly the same as in the slides so that means we I hope we don't have any problem with understanding how this code is working um, if you're still having a trouble with understanding how these codes uh, are working or some of, some of the lines of the code, then you can just visit during the office hours, which are Monday, Tuesday from 5 to 6 p.m. But before coming, please make sure to email me. Um, let's open up three uh, command lines and uh, compile the source files and run them. So first, let's compile the server part, so the server part on this terminal. gcc-o server echo mp server.c file and then compile uh, the client one as well echo mp client.c file so let's run the uh, server code here and then two clients here okay so let's run first the server bar which is done by server of uh, command lines uh, command line arguments and then calling the client like this so one client has connected, as here the server is saying, and then let's connect the second client as well. Now I want to tell you again one more time that uh, these clients are not just simple clients right now. We, here we are already splitting the input and output routines, which means the write operation and then the read operations are being called, uh, are being ran from uh, different uh, processes already, so they're, they're, they're separate. And even if you try to understand like what's going on, then just you can just do PS and track it yourself. For example, the, uh, the client will be having a child a sub. The, the, the client has been just generated to multiple times. For example, here you can, you can see that the client uh, has one process, two process, three process, and four process, even though we have just two processes running here. Uh, the client has been separate. Each client has just two uh, processes running. That, that's what I wanted to show. Um, uh, so now let's try to exchange data with the server. So now, now one server, one client, uh, I mean, 
one write operation is giving us the result of one read operation, uh, which are being executed from these two different processes inside clients, which is also working fine in this client as well. So this is the most beautiful way, I believe. Now, it's not the most beautiful way, it's really intelligent way of implementing multi-process uh, TCP client uh, that I just explained to you. Let's just terminate them and see that uh, the children have been removed uh, on the server as well because our server is also careful about zombie processes. That makes uh, my eyes really happy. And I believe uh, I will be announcing a homework. Uh, I will be still uh, discussing with professor and probably from next week uh, we might have the first homework uh, for the semester. Thank you for listening and I hope to we can't see soon but still like I hope to I hope to, uh, to teach you <laughs> the next live session. Bye.